G'day Spurs fans, Paul Otsberg here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. And I'm taking an early morning stroll through a massive park in Western Sydney. And what do I see? Five traffic cones. What a coincidence, eh? Could it be, could it be that that was an omen for what was England's best performance of the Euros? Uh, especially in the first half. Um, I thought we actually looked all right. I was thinking, oh, and do you know what? The sad old hypocrite I am, that was enough to get me sucked in and going. And uh, <laughs> I, I quite enjoyed the game mostly uh, in the end. Uh, the Netherlands took a, a lead with an absolute screamer of a shot just past the... Uh, fingertips of Jordan Pickford who had another good game you stick an England shirt on that guy and he's pretty good um, we played all right in the first half but and I haven't watched any um, I haven't watched any reactions or anything like that so I might be talking out my bottom here but Harry Kane mate Harry Kane what's going on what's going on Harry he's not a Spurs player anymore so I suppose I can put the boot into him but I don't know he looks leggy he doesn't look fit. And he keeps on coming back into the midfield. He's crowding people out. Like, Voden and uh, Bellingham didn't have the best of games. But I'm kind of thinking that that's partly bloody Harry Kane coming back into midfield. What's he trying to do? Help out. Your help isn't required, son. You're supposed to be up front, making runs. You know, Gary Lineker stuff. That sort of thing. Not coming back and helping out. And so, you know, even when Bellingham or Voden did get the ball and they're looking up, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just green. There's no white shirt to aim for. And, uh, you know, I don't know, man. I know he's the England captain, but I'd be dropping him. I'd be dropping him. Because look what happened when the genius maestro coach that is Gareth Southgate I'm fully behind him now. <laughs> Am I hell? <laughs> as soon as he brought on uh, Ollie Watkins and uh, Cole Palmer, there you go. Five minutes later, the winning goal. The winning goal. Ollie Watkins did more running around in the penalty box than Harry Kane's done all tournament. Um, I'd be starting him. I'd be starting him or... Um, or Ivan Tony, you know we need a we need a striker. We need someone the same as Tottenham, isn't it? We need a, we need someone to aim at. And uh, unlike Tottenham, where I'm not going to be critical of Ange, Gareth Southgate has got every English player nationality at his disposal, and he keeps sticking with his mates. And I think that's what he's doing with Harry Kane at the moment. I don't think Harry Kane is earning his shirt at the moment. There's uh, probably a spy plane goes past, you know. And um, whereas at Tottenham, we don't have all that at our disposal. But England, we do. I mean, he's got Ollie Watkins, Ivan Tony as a, as a point man up front. Why isn't he using them? He just, I'm scratching my head, man. I'm scratching my head. I think of some of our play in the first half, I think the players have got together and said, you know, sod Gareth, let's go and play football. Because I did see signs of good stuff good stuff it's just that we didn't create the chances now as for the penalty uh, first of all um, I'm with Bellingham so the referee that uh, the ref the game actually has been done for proper match fixing not rumors and innuendo he actually took a bung and had to serve I think it was it was only like a six months suspension or so, or even that it was bugger all suspension I don't think a referee should be allowed a referee not the top level again after they've been uh, found taking a bung and being corrupt. You just can't, you can't do it. Uh, and Bellingham got fined uh, a year or two ago uh, when he was playing for Dortmund for, for saying, well, how, how come we got this ref back? Apparently Bellingham was the one that was bringing them, uh, the game into disrepute and not the bent ref. So there we go, we had the bent ref in. And the penalty, whew, it's a tricky one, that. Um, I think the defender was going for Harry Kane's leg, 
but it's very hard to see even in slow motion. I don't think that impeded the shot that Harry Kane got off. So it depends how you look at it. On the one hand, um, it was possibly a foul. You know, I mean, Harry Kane did go down making a meal of it as well. Um, but on the other hand, if he hadn't have done it, I don't think it would have been a goal anyway, because I think Harry still did the shot he wanted. Um, so 50-50, man. It was a tough call. It was a tough call giving a penalty for that. But I can see why it was given. 50-50. Um, I'll say that, 50-50. Could have gone either way. Maybe, uh, maybe old Gareth Southgate and a brown paper bag for the ref. Oh, am I bringing the game into disrepute? No, the bloody ref did when he took a bung. Uh, so it was a tough one, that. Um, and perhaps the way England played in the second half as well, which was not good. Uh, I wasn't quite falling asleep during it, but um, it wasn't good. Did Holland or Netherlands deserve to get through uh, to at least extra time? Well, no, because the score was 2-1. That's the short answer. It looked like it was heading that way. Um, but then Cole Palmer, the two substitutes, Cole uh, Palmer and uh, Ollie Watkins, did what a football team should be doing. I'm kind of thinking, well, if they can do that in five minutes, albeit maybe Netherlands weren't great, but they did play, you know, Gakpo, man. Gakpo just sliced through the England defence a couple of times. Good player, good player. Uh, Van Dijk was good. Um, would you be, I'd, be look, I'd at least be playing Oli uh, or, um, or Ivan Tony up front, get rid of Kane. Then you could probably argue the toss about whether to make changes such as Voden for, um, uh, Voden for um, Palmer or, or not. There's some people coming up here, hang on. Because uh, it could be that without Harry Kane's shaped obstacle blocking up midfield and getting in everyone's space, that Voden could play well. It's not his natural position, but he could play well. So I'd do that. I'd probably start Voden and uh, give him a half and see how he goes and then bring on Palmer. But Palmer did have a good season. So did Voden, though. This is what I mean. This is why... The, you can really lay the blame at the manager's feet in this instance because he has got the tools at his disposal, but he's using a screwdriver when he should be using a chisel, if you know what I mean. Um, so, but anyway, having said that, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy and uh, I just want to win it. I want to win it. I'd love to win. I'd love to win the Euros. It'd be fantastic. Um, I don't know what the atmosphere really is back in England. I haven't seen much of it. It seems a bit quiet compared to four years ago or even compared to uh, when the England women's team got into the final. There seemed to be a bit more buzz about the place. I don't know if there's, uh, I don't know, that connection between people and the team, but I, look, I'm a million miles away. But even four years ago, I could still see it. You know, I could still feel it. Uh, seeing like what fans are saying, seeing, you know, just seeing what friends back home are saying. It doesn't seem to be quite that way, but I'm sure we'll all get in there for the final. It'd be nice to, uh, it would be nice to lift one, get the hoodoo off, and then hopefully if we make a coaching change, because that really needs to happen, uh, I think we could actually win the World Cup. Now, of course, we are playing Spain. And although you could argue, or I could argue, that England are maybe peaking at the right time. Their performances are steadily improving. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to beat Spain. I've been watching a crash course in extended highlights of Spain's games, and per, they are a decent team. It's going to be a real test for England. But the other omen I've got for you is uh, in my Predict the Football competition, I've been putting in the scores before I know what teams are playing and it's panning out very well for me at the moment. It appears that when I try to use my football knowledge and brain, I'm absolutely arse at tipping. But when I uh, just use the force and uh, don't know what quite is going on, I'm quite good at tipping. 
I tipped uh, England to win the Netherlands, uh, against the Netherlands 3-1 before I knew which teams were playing. And it was near enough. Uh, I tipped Spain to get through to the final. Uh, no, I didn't. Got that one wrong, I think. But anyway, the final, my final score prediction, surprisingly, now that the teams are populated, is England 4, Spain 2. And that's what I'm going with and that's what I'm sticking. I told, uh, I rang a friend of mine this morning who lives in Spain and uh, <laughs> he said, yeah, England, England are through at the final, but if they don't win it, they haven't done anything really, have they? <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> and I see his point because we did the same new thing four years ago, although we played a bit better four years ago. Anyway, I wanted upwards. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to get up nice and early, uh, have a nice big breakfast. I think I'll have a big fry up, uh, five o'clock kickoff on Monday morning. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can see uh, whoever it might be. It's probably Harry Kane's going to be captain. And then, let's face it, lift up the bloody cup at last for England. Anyway, till next time, folks. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Coming you Spurs. As woo, look at that. Cycles pass. Bye bye.